You too, team. Keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video and another episode of NFL Question from subscribers, and this thing is going to be loaded because y'all sent a lot of questions. But what question from subscribers is is a series where you can ask me any question you want to, and we answer it in a video just like this. If you ever want to be part of it, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. And for the patrons, appreciate all the patrons. Thank you to all the patrons. You can send it directly on Patreon. If you would like to become a Team Keep It Clean patron and have your name on this beautiful list to my left or right. I always forget where it is when I'm looking at the camera. But anyway, you can go to patreon.com slash engravingvids. And if you don't want to become a patron, that's fine too. You know I still love you regardless. Team Keep It Clean, we got a lot, <laughs> a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of questions Let's dive into it. Ooh, starting off strong. This first question came from Manny. He said, could this be the worst defense the Ravens ever had? Oh, yikes. He said, Ain't Raven, shout out from Massachusetts. Love the work you do, man. Appreciate it. I'm going to get straight to it. Hey, we doing the same thing. He said, after watching the Dolphins, I hear a lot of fans that want Roman out. But what about the job Wink has done this year with the defense? Yes, I know we have key players out, but there is not uh, a rotation out front in the defensive line. I noticed how Campbell, who's one of the oldest guys on the team, we have him like on special teams too. Well... Let me stop you right there. Do you not remember when he blocked that field goal in a Colts game? And that was one of the only reasons the Ravens won. If he doesn't block that field goal, Ravens probably don't win that game. So that's why he's out there on special. I mean, because I know you ain't talking about kick return. He ain't out there. He's on a field goal block unit. The dude is like seven foot seven. He's really like six foot seven, but he's a giant and he got long arms and long reach. That's why he's out there on special teams. But let me continue. He said he would do so much better, in my opinion, if we had a younger guy to do his job on special teams. Well, we already explained that part. Same with Bowser. I just see no rotation on that defensive line, and that hurts the rest of the defense. And is Ferguson even on the team anymore? He's just taking a roster spot while staying on the bench. Sorry for the long email, man. God bless. Go Ravens. Woo! Man, he brought it from jump. Um, so to go piece by piece so what about the job that wink has done this year with the defense who the defense has been rough this year certainly has um but they've had they've had some games where they're just out there and they are doing a great job and the offense is just not giving them any kind of help i mean we saw that in this uh in this dolphins game the de they, now, they did give up some big plays, man, and this defense has been giving up like a record of big plays, especially when you compare it to recent Ravens season. They've been giving up a lot of big plays, but like especially in the Dolphins game, they were super, super bend, 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 bend all the way back, but they did not break. They didn't break. They just kept giving up field goals, field goals, field goals, field goals, field goals, field goals, field goals. And in fact, the first touchdown that was given up of the game came from Ravens offense. When Sammy Watkins fumbled the ball and Xavier Howard said, oh, let me scoop this up like Ravens didn't want to scoop me up and let me take it back to the house. So that was Ravens offense that ended up giving up the first touchdown, not even the Ravens defense. How about that? So the, the defense, like, they definitely had their bad moments, though, because, I mean, you look at the, the, the Vikings game just four days before, and it's like they, their biggest problem was the big plays in that game. When they stopped the big plays, Vikings offense, they hardly moved the ball. Because they will get that big play to Justin Jefferson, a big catch, and I mean, I mean the big run by Dalvin Cook. It was, just, it was the big plays that, and then the kick return too, but that's not defense, that's special teams. So, but then you've had the times when you think, oh yeah, the defense got it and they end up just, they, they can't cover nobody. They, they leaving guys wide open like that Bengals game. Ooh, that Bengals, ooh, that Bengals, ooh, that Bengals game. Ugh. Yuck. Yuck. Now, they, they killed it in, in the Chargers game. They just killed it in the um in the Broncos game. But in the Colts game, ooh, the Colts game, again, they were super, super, super Ben, 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 even though on that first draft they gave up that, like, 74-yard screen pass. But besides that, they were getting, like, up and down the field. Up and down the field, the Colts just moving the ball at will. But in the first half, they only gave up 10 points. But the Ravens' offense didn't help. They didn't help. They didn't wake up until it was too late. So I think the defense has been, it's been historically bad. Um, especially, when, again, when you compare it to recent defenses. But the offense has made it that much worse. And, and the offense, when they get off to these slow starts, a lot of us, 
we forget about the good that the defense actually does. We forget about it a lot of times because they're out there so much because the offense, they're going on for three and out, going on for three and out, going on for again, three and out, three and out, three and out, three and out, three and out. Oh, first down. Oh, okay. Then, oh, got a punt now. So the, 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 uh, the offense will, will not move the ball. And then the defense, they'll be doing a good job, but then they'll keep suffering for it because offense ain't moving. Now, the defense has certainly not been perfect. They, they've been rough this year, too, now. Um, and you, because you got guys like, and that's why I said I feel like the Ravens should have simplified some things. Um, just let guys get great at something before you have them trying to do like 50 million different things. And I know normally Wink's defenses, they got, you always got guys doing 50 million different things. It's always the more you can do. It, it's, but it's, I feel like with that defense, and, and this work has held it down. It's been a defense that has been atop the league when it comes to scoring. And that's the biggest thing. That's the most important thing. Hey, if, you, if your defense is holding teams away from scoring, that's what it's all about. That is what it's all about. But you also got to make adjustments. You also got to change stuff if it's not working. And I feel like a lot of times with, with both our coordinators, it happens a lot. We see where they just they can get sort of stuck in their ways and, and they won't want to adjust. And that can be very frustrating to see. Um, so hopefully in this second half of the season, Wink looks at everything and he's just willing to adjust more. He's willing to do something different if his original plan just isn't working. I just feel like um, I feel like one of the biggest things that I feel like the Ravens would be, uh, they would be in a better position if their safeties, they played safety. And I know he liked blitzing different guys. Like, and he, I don't know, he liked showing blitz, but not blitzing certain guys in different packages. I, I know I get it. You want to disguise plays and whatnot. You want to make the quarterback think, oh, who's coming? Where's he coming from? I don't know where he's going to come from. I get that, and I understand that, and I respect it. But sometimes I feel like them safety just need to drop back because the corners that you have, Marlon Humphrey, this has not been his best year. <laughs> this has not been his best year at all. Anthony Averitt, like you, you, you don't want to just keep putting your guys on an island. If their island has been getting exposed all year, you don't want to do that. So when you keep bringing these safeties down in, in, inside the box and whatnot, you keep bringing them a lot around the line of scrimmage and, oh, okay, you're going to blitz. Oh, no, you're going to blitz. No, you're going to blitz. You're going to blitz. It's like I feel like you just, yeah, when, when it works, it works, and that's a beautiful thing. But it also runs the risk of exposing your guys a lot, which they have been exposed a lot this year. Teams have shown they're not afraid of Marlon Humphrey anymore. They will go right at him. Sometimes he'll make the play now. Sometimes he won't. Like even the other night against the Dolphins, Tua, Jacoby Brissett, they were going at Jalen Waddle and Marlon Humphrey. And they were winning a lot of times. They was Mike Jasicki, he they tried him. He ain't win. But teams are going at Marlon Humphrey. They're not scared. Like you would think, all right, Anthony Avery, oh boy, this is going to be a year for him because teams are going to go at him like crazy. No, they've still been going at Marlon Humphrey more than ever. So... When you, when Marlon Humphrey doesn't have any help behind him, like, of course, you want Marlon Humphrey to do his thing, but it would be nice if he had some help, too. If somebody's struggling, you got to put them in a position to where they have help, where it's not just them. So I just feel like that, in my opinion, that has been one of the biggest issues this year with, uh, with Wink, in my opinion, that it's just been guys have not been put in positions to succeed. Now, it's not all on him. Because Wink ain't out there missing tackles. He certainly wasn't out there in the, in the beginning of the season missing all them tackles. Nope, that wasn't on him at all. But then when, when, with, with these blown coverages and whatnot, I just, I don't even know who that's on. Whether that's on him or that's on the players or it's a mix of both, I don't know for that part. But I just feel like, I feel like he could definitely be uh, a little better. Next question came from my boy Joshua B. Oh, speaking of defense, he said, what's up, Engraven? Hope your day is going good and the family's good. I noticed that we are not using Jimmy Smith as much anymore. In the Vikings game, I don't think I saw him in at corner or safety. I saw him a couple times last night in the Dolphins game, but I think we can and should use him more. When Tavon Young was questionable coming back, we used Chris Westry and not Jimmy Smith. And at safety, even though Brandon had a good game, I still think we could have had Jimmy on the field for his veteran presence and knowledge. What do you think? Thanks for reading this and can't wait for the next video. Stay safe, Josh. Be appreciate that, Josh. That is a really good question that I know a, a, a lot of us have been wondering, like, what is going on with Jimmy Smith? Because he just hasn't been out there much. 
I don't know if he's still injured. I don't know if he's dealing with something. I don't know if the Ravens are just like, uh, we just don't want to risk you the injury. I, I really do not know what it is. And the fact that, yeah, like you said, they had Chris Westry out there. They had number 30 out there instead of number 22. I was like, oh, oh, oh okay. And I was just talking to one of my guys. I think my guy Nick the other day. And he was asking the same question. And I was like, maybe, maybe they're just preserving him for the long run. I, I just don't know. And he said, preserving him for what? And he answered me just like that. And I was like, I, I don't know. I don't know. But the, the whole Jimmy Smith thing is a very, very good question that I, I do not have the answer to at all. Next question came from my guy Dalton. He said, hey, Engraven, hope all is well with you and the family. I try to make this short. I remember over the past year or so, fans have almost been begging for the Ravens to incorporate more screens and short passes into the game plan. Hello. Uh, it seems they finally started running them more, but maybe a little too much. Yes. Uh, in the last two games, they would throw a screen on third and tens, basically stifling the drive. But maybe it's just me. What do you think? Oh, no, it's not just you, my friend. Dalton, it's, it's not just you. That's uh, been something that has just been... It's like Greg Roman, he heard, he heard us talking about the screens, and he was like, oh, you want screens? I'm going to give you more screens. There you go. Take them all. Third and, 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 yeah, and I feel like on third and ten, like against the Dolphins, that's why I say Dolphins had the Ravens shook. Their defense had Ravens offense shook because the fact that you're throwing these screens on, on third and long and you're doing it over and over again, it's not working. I respect you for trying, but you, you, after a couple of them, you're like, okay, let's scratch that because it ain't been working. But you try over and over and over and over and over and over again. And it's, it's almost like Lamar, there were some points where he was just, he had to get the ball out so quick because he was so used to the Dolphins defense getting there like that. So Dolphins defense did a phenomenal job of having his whole Ravens offense shook. They were shooketh in their booties. But anyway, um, that, that is, it's all about balance. Uh, it's, it's, it's all about just um, consistency. Uh, and it's all about right, right, right time, right place. And for all the screens that the Ravens were doing on uh, Thursday night against the Dolphins, it was not not right time, right place uh, at all. It, it ooh, that was a whole lot of screens. Ooh, big yikes. Um, so it's it's about doing doing it when the time is right. And 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 no, you don't want to do it in a predictable way or anything like that. But you got to recognize like, hey, the, this ain't it right now, man. This ain't it. But yeah, it was certainly an overload of screens uh, against the Dolphins. Next question came from my guy, El Chapo. He said, what's up, Engraven? Hope the fame is doing good. Now, there was a live stream where we were streaming, and he kept spamming Batman, 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 Batman. So I had to time him out. I'm like, man, you ain't got to do all that spamming. We see it. We see it after the first time. But anyway, he said, uh, I didn't mean any harm when I was spamming that. I'm just big on Bateman. The guy is special. He played the last two drives only in the second half and led the team in yards. Hollywood dropped us out the game. I think Bateman deserves a shot at wide receiver one. What do you think, if you don't mind me asking? And P.S., I ain't mean it, uh, that this is where the real fans come. Uh, come, I needed to let it out. My bad. Okay, it's all good, man. Anyway, um, I, I feel like we, we have three wide receiver ones on the team. Uh, we know what Sammy Watkins can do when he's healthy. Like, that game against the Dolphins. Ugh. And I, I was actually talking to a, a, a Chiefs fan in the comments section. Um, of a video, uh, a recent video, he said, oh, man, Sammy's washed. He's washed. And I said, no. Well, hold up. Did I say a Chiefs fan? I, I, I hope I said Chiefs fan. If I, if I didn't say Chiefs fan, I meant Chiefs fan. So I was talking to a Chiefs fan, and he was like, oh, Sammy's washed. I said, no, no. He's not washed. And the guy was like, oh, what? How many games has he missed for y'all? And then he, then he fumbled against the Dolphins. He's washed. And I said, so, I said, injury prone, yes, but that's what we all expected. We knew that going into it. But I said a fumble in a game, it does not make somebody washed. And I said Sammy Watkins had actually been doing pretty good for us this season overall. Because he had been. And he had opened up so much for Hollywood Brown and allowed Hollywood to be better too. And he sort of let Hollywood take the lead almost. And it's, it's like, so no, wash, no. Injured, hurt, yeah. But wash, no. So with, with uh, Sammy Watkins, Hollywood, with Bateman, we, we got a nice trio, but... We just want to see them all use effectively and efficiently. The way that uh, with Rashad Bateman, it wasn't Hollywood's night on on against the Dolphins at all. He he had a pretty bad night. He had drops. He just it, it was not a good night for him at all. But Bateman, on the other hand, Bateman was looking a lot better. And it's nice when you have you can bounce off of guys like, hey, if one guy ain't doing so good one night, all right, you go to the other one. If the other guy ain't doing so good, one well, okay, you go to the other one. But you hope that both of them can do well every night, but it just doesn't happen like that. 
So with uh, with Watkins, it wasn't his night. Uh, with Hollywood, it wasn't his night. I guess the, the, all the Florida boys were just off that night. So, yeah, I, I do think Bateman should have been featured more, and he should continue to be featured a lot because he's nice. He's nice, and he is NFL ready. So, yeah, I agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> Next question came from my guy Fernando. He said, "Hey, Raven, I love watching Ravens content. You and one of my go-to's. I understand that you've been playing in the game for the Dolphins, but man, I missed your live stream big today on the night that the Dolphins played the Ravens. Every time the Ravens have been down this year, I always turn up your live stream to grief together as a community. <laughs> yeah, we we do do that. That's true. Uh, we can all be sad together when the Ravens lose, especially depending on how they lose. But anyway, uh, he says, sadly enough, though, you didn't have one this week." Uh, I am kind of superstitious, and every time I have you on in the background, we always find a way to win. Uh, coincidentally, we didn't against the Dolphins. I believe it is due to all the haters slash trolls jinxing it out the way. I understand you can't live stream in the loud crowd, but I just wanted to let you know how much you would miss. Thank you, Pete. Uh, thank you for your content. Um, well, first, I appreciate it. I, I, I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed the, uh, the live streams, and we have a lot of fun in the live streams. Whether the Ravens win, whether the Ravens lose, it's obviously a lot more fun when they win. Um, but think about the, the, this why uh, my, my live streams they don't have anything to do with the Ravens winning or losing any commentators or fans or trolls like you said jinxing it no no such thing as jinxing they don't have anything to do with it if the Ravens win or lose because um, think about it like we we stream we stream the Raiders game week one of the season Ravens lost we streamed that Bengals game a couple weeks ago Ravens lost we stream week two we beat the Chiefs. We stream the Lions game. We stream other games, the Chargers game with the Ravens. So it's it's not any, oh, when you stream, we win. Or when you stream, we lose. No, it ain't got nothing to do with me. Whatever games the Ravens going to win, they're going to win. Whatever games the Ravens going to lose, they're going to lose. Um, but, yeah, it is nice that we can all, like, again, we, we can all enjoy the moments together. Because um, that, that, that's special and it's fun. Um, now, he also asked, uh, how are you feeling about this squad after this game? All the late wins keep me hopeful. Until, of course, they lose. <laughs> I like that. Um, they, they just got to bounce back. They, they got to bounce back. The day that I'm recording this is uh, Wednesday, November 17th. And Lamar, he missed practice today due to sickness. Now, we know every time Lamar misses practice due to sickness, ooh, the, 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 the next game, he's on fire. So Bears, they better watch out because it's about to be bounce back season. And the last question on this episode came from my boy, uh, Big Drizzy. He said, hey, Engraven, I just want to say I love your channel. Been watching for a while. You shout out my comments out a few times on your live stream. And it made me feel even that much more involved. So thank you for that. Really appreciate it. No, I appreciate you. If you comment in the live streams or sending questions from subscribers, you a part of this. Like, it's, it's team keep it clean. Not I keep it clean, not me keep it clean. It's we keep it clean because we team keep it clean. But I, I appreciate you, man. He said, um, how do you think playing three games within seven days, Vikings last Sunday, then Miami Thursday, and now the Bears this Sunday? That's not three games within seven days, is it? I'm pretty sure it's not. No, that's not. No, 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 no. It's, it's not. That's No, it's, that's impossible. Because um, I, now I got to pull out a calendar. Because I know it's not, but I got to see it for myself that it's not. All right. So, today's the 17th. We played on the 11th. So, we played, but before then, we played on the 7th. That was the Vikings on the 7th. It was Dolphins on the 11th. Then we got that 10-day break. And then we play again on the 21st. So, all right. Just had to clear that up. Um, anyway. He said, how do you think that many games back-to-back -back is going to affect our team mentally and physically, and how do you predict we will play against the Bears? Thanks for taking the time to answer my question. I hope to hear it in the next episode. And sorry it was so long. I know it's all good, man. All right, so, yeah, the, the schedule. No, that, that wasn't the schedule. They, they had to play all those games in all those days. Well, in that limited amount of days. But now it's, it's about to bounce back. You, This was supposed to – Miami Dolphins game was supposed to be a gimme, uh, but the Ravens were like, here, you have it. Uh, but – it's, it's all good. It happens. And then when you look around the whole NFL, you look, everybody fell for the trap. Everybody did. Um, when you, uh, Ravens, I, I didn't realize, but I, I guess when they talked about the record um, this week, Ravens have never won a game in Chicago. I do remember the last time we played Chicago in Chicago. That was that game that I think got delayed by like, 
two hours. It was crazy, crazy delay for that game. Um, and the Ravens end up losing like at the very end too. So the game was long. It was, I think that might have been the longest game I ever been a part of, man. Uh, or ever watched, not been a part of, but because the Super Bowl was long. I think that game against the Bears was longer than the Super Bowl, though. I forgot what the weather was in Chicago, but it's something crazy, and the, they had to delay it. Like I said, it, oh man, that thing took forever. I remember I was watching it at a sports bar. So, like, it would have been one thing if I would have been able to watch it from the crib, but I had to watch it from a sports bar. So, I, I just I'm sitting there. I'm like, okay, I'll get some more chicken wings. Okay, I'll get some more fries. Okay, I'll eat a little bit more here and there. But anyway, um, I, I think that they, I mean, they ain't got no choice but to bounce back. Because if you lose against the Bears, too, then you're just allowing everybody in your division to creep on up. And right now you're sitting at a, not necessarily a sweet spot, but a good, you're first in your division, despite losing to the Dolphins. You could have took a commanding lead in the division, but you decided you want to lose to the Dolphins. Okay, cool. You make mistakes, stuff happens. Um, so now Ravens just, you got to get focused because they, they will really have no excuse because this is almost like a bye week. Because you just played on a Thursday and now you have a, a whole 10 days to, to be off. A whole 10 days to be off. And this kind of, um, it kind of sort of matches you up with the Bears. Because the Bears, they were on a bye week. So they're coming off a bye week. You're coming off a 10-day break. So it sort of levels out the playing field a bit. Uh, so that's something important to, uh, to, to keep in mind. But the Ravens, they, they have to be on point. It's so important that they start off strong. It's so, because this Bears team, they got confidence. Because they saw what, what happened in that Steelers game. they like, oh, man, yeah, we end up blow, blowing it. We end up coming up short. But still. They took it to the Steelers. And the Steelers really only won because of all them bad calls. Like, the, the refs in the NFL were like, nah, ain't no way we about to let Bears upset these Steelers. Oh, no, it ain't happening tonight. So the, the, the Bears could have got it. But there was a lot of okie dokie going on that night. A whole lot. So Bears know that they can hang. So they already got some confidence, and now they got all this time to game plan. Even though I think the, the record is something. It's like Bears are like... Ah, I forgot since when, but they said they're like 0-7 coming off a bye. Something crazy. Something crazy. And I'm like, oh, big yikes. Uh, hopefully that record doesn't get broken, but it gets extended. Uh, so we'll see. But I do expect the Ravens to, to, to bounce back um, and really just right the ship, like, right away. Uh, and it starts with Chicago. Chicago.